This year's NAIDOC theme is because of her we can. This year's theme is important to show how strong and inspiring our women are. I am strong because of the women around me. Nyang Gabali means my grandmother. Nyang Nyak means my mother. Nyang Mum Nyok means my auntie. Karajingwa means listening, learning and understanding. So I learn from my mum, grandmother, auntie and sisters. I love being a Noongar. I'm proud of my culture and my people. Because of her we can. Because of her we can. We dance today for the Murich Yoga.
Did those from the First Fleet use germ warfare against indigenous people they met? Sounds atrocious, doesn't it? But there were contemporary precedents in other lands against other native people. Could the virus they deployed have lasted the voyage from England? Were they not fearful of themselves being infected as the Marines spread the pox? And finally, could there not be another explanation for this startling story? Well, Chris Warren is a retired public servant living in Canberra. He was attached to the Department of Education there. Here he tells the tale from his point of view following considerable research. And, as he says, it is controversial. Most listeners will have heard of a major outbreak of smallpox near Sydney in 1789. For those who may only have an inkling, let me provide some background. In April 1789, a sudden, unusual epidemic of smallpox was reported amongst Port Jackson tribes who were actively resisting settlers from the First Fleet. This outbreak may have killed over 90% of nearby native families and maybe three quarters or half of those further out between the Hawkesbury River and the shores of Port Hacking. It also killed an unknown proportion of Aboriginals at Jarvis Bay and beyond the Blue Mountains. Now, there have always been disputes over this event. Some authors have argued that the First Fleet had no involvement whatsoever in the outbreak, while others argue that if the fleet was involved, then it must have been some other disease, such as chickenpox. I suggest we can now put this dispute behind us, based on solid documentary evidence. There is now no reasonable doubt that the First Fleet was involved and that the disease was true smallpox. I wonder if you'd believe this as a solution to the Aboriginal problem. Herd the worst of the Aborigines into one area and put a chemical in their water that sent them sterile. In time, there'd be none of them left. Well, that solution has been put forward by none other than one of the Premier's closest friends, West Australian mining magnate, Lang Hancock. Those that have been assimilated into you know, earning good living or earning wages amongst the civilised areas, that have been accepted into society and they have accepted society and can handle society, I'd leave them well alone. The ones that are no good to themselves and can't accept things, the half caste, and this is where most of the trouble come, I would dope the water up so that they were sterile and would breed themselves out in the future and that would solve the problem. Azurina Prison, 
the toughest maximum security jail in Western Australia. The end of the line for the state's most hardcore criminals. 600 prisoners are locked up here, and danger is never far away. Prisons are a violent environment. There's no two ways about it. A lot of very bad criminals in here. I've seen people kill, seen knives go through guards. We have a dress alarm in education. I really thought, I'm going to die here. For the first time ever, our cameras go inside Casuarina Jail to witness life behind bars in an Australian maximum security prison. There were also quite a few older guys that, from looks alone, appeared to be gang members kind of waiting in the wings. It seemed tense at first, but everyone was just kind of hanging back in their groups. Pretty soon, though, a heavy metal song was queued up. A spotlight was on the dusty front yard, which we soon realised was the dance floor. We didn't know for sure, but it sounded like Megadeth. Either way, the headbangers held court as the song blasted our ears. Right after the last guitar riff ended, the mob cleared the dance floor. And as the next song came on, which we knew was Slayer because we recognised a few of the boys, it was clear that we were in the midst of a heavy metal dance-off, or as the Aboriginal guys called it, a disco. Even though each mob brought their own CD, the DJ was playing others while members of rival mobs took to the dance floor, joined together for the same song in the same head-banging routine. Is it possible that these heavy metal discos have the effect of keeping some measure of peace between the gangs? What's on next? Who's gonna dance next? Check your history books, buddy. Almost everything is solved by violence. There are better ways. Okay, name one. Besides dialoguing. Name one? Name one. What do you mean, name you, one? No, 
you said you could solve problems with things other so than just fighting. Say, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Well, you said you knew. Look, you act like you knew. Fine. Yes. What? Dancing. Dancing. Did you, did you just say dancing, Brad? It's very popular in youth culture to resolve conflict through dancing. They step up to each other and get served by crunking or popping and locking. They call each other out. They they take turns, and it is no less intense than a classic street brawl. But at the end of the day, no one's hurt, and it's a, it's a great aerobic workout. He's flailing a bit, but he has a good point. There's a rich history of dance battles in films. You got breaking one, well, breaking two. I didn't even think of this. Electric Boogaloo, one of the rare cases where the sequel was better than the original. Much better. You got Step It Up, Stomp the Yard. He makes a solid point. Honey, are you telling us that we should teach Dylan to dance? <sighs> no, I, I'm just saying that teaching him to fight isn't the answer. Hello, Black Dollar Benefits Scheme. This is the government. Uh, hi, yeah, my name's Ebony. Um, I'm just wondering if I can apply for some free things from the government through the Black Dollar Benefits Scheme. Black Dollar Benefits Scheme. Look, I don't know what kind of free things you've heard that Black Dollars get, Ebony, but look, you tell me what you've heard and I'll see if you're eligible for it, eh? Well, I actually heard that um, being Aboriginal, you get a free car from the government. Um, so just wondering if I can get um, some type of Holden Commodore, if that's right. <laughs> Free cars, I true gold, I must have missed that memo. Sister Ebony, listen, black girls don't get no free car. If that was the case, person would not have her broken down holding Astra. Next question. Okay, so no free car. Um, well, I heard that Aboriginals get free houses from the government, so I'll take a house instead, thanks. Free hours, oh bless you, wouldn't we all want a free house? Now listen sister, I've been renting now for about 15 years, yeah, private rentals, so um, no free house, but you can get a uh, loan, yeah, you can get a loan like everyone else, yep, but you still gonna have to pay for it, and sometimes there are Aboriginal loans, that's because, you know, our family kind of had to live in like humpies and like our land was taken away and a few other things and why we couldn't get housing like racism, so that's a reason. Uh, so no free house, no free car, um, okay. Look, I'll take free house, because I heard Aboriginals get free house. Everything's for free, so please, I'll have that. Yeah, like regular house clinics. Yeah, black fellas got their, their black clinics as well. But listen, you can go there, but all the aunties and uncles, they're going to be Doris and her, yeah. And I tell you, because we die like 17 years younger than most Australians, um, you're actually going to have to get like a full house check. I'm talking head to toe there, sister girl. So if you're ready to do that, then sure go along. Okay, no free health, but what about free university hex fees? I heard that Aboriginals don't have to pay hex fees. Can I get that on the Black Dollar Benefits Scheme? God bless you, she reckon free hex fees. Look, listen, Ebony, darling, my darling, no. Hex fees to the government and to universities are just like poker machines to the casino. They're not going to let you play them for free. Oh, bless, I'm still paying up my hex bill. Okay, well, what about free university? I heard Aboriginals get free university. Free uni, if only, eh? I treat if there was free university for black fellas, every black fella and I'd be lining up there for that free education. Okay, well, can I at least get ab study then? Ab study, what do I have to do? Mmm, ab study. Yeah, you know, I'll study, yeah, same, same, black and white. You know who did that? The government to segregate us. It's just the name, my darling. And you know what? It is also the same amount of poxy little money you've got to jump through hoops for. And if your parents are in too much, you can kiss that little ab study goodbye. Ebony, I'm sorry I couldn't help you with any uh, of those so-called handouts from the Black Dollar Benefits Scheme. Um, is there anything else I can help you with? Ebony, you there? Listen, yeah, listen, darling. I found out 
the, uh, the free things that you will get, though, as a black fellow. Are you ready? Yep, okay. You're going to get more racism, more discrimination, higher chronic health statistics, uh, intergenerational trauma. You will get higher imprisonment rates, higher suicide rates, uh, low unemployment, and more. So can I interest you in any of those black fellow benefits? Yeah, no, I think I'll pass. Thanks anyway. Mm, that's what I thought. Bye-bye. Mm, The do-gooders came along and the, these bureaucrats and the rest of them who write great thesis on things down south about problems in the north and they decided that they better go and civilise these savages of ours so they brought them into the towns, threw them in amongst the people and they closed their eyes and shut their eyes to the problems that uh, confront the white population. There's no way in the world that I am happy with the fact that money is being lent to Aborigines at 2% to build houses when our young people have got to pay 14 and 15% to build a house and they've got to work their guts out and pay tax to get it. The Aborigines are getting absolutely total help from the, not only the federal government, the Queensland government. Now I wouldn't mind, Philip, if it was just the black, the true Aborigine, but there are so many hybrids and they are nearly white and this is where it hurts me. White men think that land, no matter how sacred it is to us, can be destroyed for money. The greatest threat to the survival of our culture comes from the multinational mining companies. These companies have discovered wealth and profits under the last areas of Australia which we hold. This is the Comelco bauxite mine at Weeper, on Aboriginal land. The mining company pays us no royalties and they accept no responsibility for the terrible impact they have had on the Aboriginal people here. European came, we got nothing now. Every year of every day, thousands of people fall victim to FWP. I'm so cold. I'm starving. Nobody cares about me. Also known as first world problems. I'm so cold. Somebody set the AC to 72. I need it at 73. I'm starving. All we have is leftovers. Nobody cares about me. Nobody commented or liked my status. Hi, I'm Ryan Higa, and for just five hours of attention a day, you could help somebody with FWP. Everyone keeps putting so much pressure on me. I don't know what I want for my birthday. I have too much chips for my dip. But if I open a new dip, I'll have too much dip for my chips. Why does Apple keep making new iPhones? Now I have to get another one? They've been through so much struggle. The remote's over there. But I'm all the way over here. So much hardship. My iPhone 5.
First air. Hey, what do you reckon? Reckon spot. Fly up the barbie. You know what's coming? Oh, a beautiful spot like this, it'll be packed before you know it. Oh, here we go. Did you organise the chips and dips? Yeah. Great spot. Oh, thank you. How long have you guys been here? Since forever, mate. <laughs> hey, where are you all from? We, sir, are from Great Britannia. We are the first fleet. Yeah, not quite, mate. <laughs> Bonjour. Oh, my God, it's the French. Hommage. It's the Germans. Oh. At least they brought their own. Who's bringing the ice? How many bags do we need, Dougie? Keep shipping, shackles. It's going to be big. My charge ride. Oh, where'd you get those? This week. What's this? The 16th First Fleet. Oi, it's the Italians, the Greeks, and the Serbians? Hey, mate, do you know where the backyard is? We've got about 4,000 k's of it out here. Need a wicket? Trust me, we need one of these around 2 a.m. Chili sauce? You did remember to let the neighbours know, right? Yeah. Mm. It's barbecue, eh, Bray? Hey, hey. hey, where should we put the chili bit? I couldn't keep them wine. Should we crack a vegan joke? Nah. <laughs> it's not a party with our eyes. Well, Hey, guys, what's the occasion? Do we need one? Look, it's a boat, people. Hang on. Aren't we all boat people? And you're welcome. What is that? Ladies Look, it's the float people. Thanks for having us, guys. Great spot for a barbie. Best in the world. <laughs>